I would uh, ask consent that my uh, opening statement uh, be in the record. No objection, right? No, no. Not at all. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Um, I apologize for being um, late. I appreciate all of you being here. Um, we, we all know that America's uh, got a very unique e economy and that our citizens are very mobile. And uh, the ability to move around the country, take better jobs is uh, critical to improving our way of life and uh, our opportunities as families. And, and so uh, the moving industry is very important uh, to everyone, e even those of us who are not moving. Uh, it is very important, I know, as an employer myself, to be able to move people in from other states. Uh, and, and even when everything goes perfectly, moving is, um, is a very stressful experience. And when things start to uh, break down, it can become a nightmare, as has been explained today. But what we need to know is um, what we can do about the problems. Uh, I've gotten a sense from what's been said today that this is not a matter of us needing more laws, but more enforcement of our laws. Uh, would um, our, our federal agency folks agree with that? Is this a matter of enforcement, or does uh, this committee need to consider new legislation? Thank you, Ranking Member DeMint and Farrow here. I would, I would reinforce that the committee took um, some very, very positive steps in the authorizing language you incorporated into MAP 21 and, and uh, uh, specifically in, in providing additional authorities to demand hostage loads be released, uh, to allow for uh, sharing of the fines and penalties against a mover with the actual consumer. Um, and to require a level of screening at the beginning before someone even gets their authority. You provided some strong additional authorities. Uh, I would say some, uh, some uh, uh, further support for partners, our federal and state partners, that are carrying out additional work, leveraging kind of mm -hmm. that force multiplier. And I would say again, this committee uh, played a leadership role, uh, Senator Lautenberg in particular, in incorporating into the original authorization proposal uh, some additional grant support for a state prosecution. Um, so, thank you. Um, Mr. Barry? I would agree with uh, what Ms. Farrell stated. For us, uh, the ability to prosecute and investigate these rogue movers is, is what we do. So when we have the ability to work with our federal and state law enforcement partners, it does act as a force multiplier. It gives us an ability to bring more of our cases to the U.S. Attorney's offices, and I think that does act as a strong deterrent within the industry. So uh, I just want to make sure that I'm clear that there's nothing in the law that is holding you back from um, uh, prosecuting uh, the, the, the violators of fraud in this industry. It's just a matter of we need to multiply the force and effect and cooperation networks with the states. Um, do you, do you feel that the industry itself, the industry association that Ms. Dar represents, um, is it doing enough? I know there are a lot of industries who do things with uh, encouraging best practices. A lot of them are involved with a, a lot of vo voluntary enforcement of their members when things aren't going right. Is, is the industry itself, uh, the big players, doing enough to, to root out uh, the ones who are the bad actors? Senator, the industry, the reputable movers have, uh, both at the state and the national level, have been very strong advocates for um, uh, pursuing and prosecuting rogue operations. Mm -hmm. uh, at the same time, uh, it's uh, from a federal enforcement perspective. Uh, our agency, the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration, has to and does demonstrate the commitment uh, to detect and pursue and prosecute. Um, those rogue companies. And so together, I think it's a great deal of effort. Uh, is it ever enough? I think we all are, are really driven to continue pursuing that. Uh, is, uh, if a consumer finds uh, themselves in the trouble that uh, Ms. Kowalczyk <laughs> did, um, how do they know who to call for help to, to get their, um, their goods released? Uh, did, did you have any idea um, what to do? Did you just call the local police or what happens? Uh, at hmm, at the, the very f first instance when the moving company arrived with the higher estimate, we did call the police um, in part because the movers are being extremely hostile. But 
Um, I do have experience in, in local government, so I started pulling up every agency I needed to talk to. I think from the statements given, there's probably even more, um, had I been even more savvy. But you know, I went through the Attorney General, I went through the Department of Justice, I went through the Federal Bureau of Transportation. I went to everything and filled out everything and submitted forms to everything that I could think of. So, just I know I'm about out of time, but I'd like to ask the industry a question. It, it would seem like on, on every contract, whether you're a broker or a mover, you're um, actually with the trucks, that it should have um, a, a call number if there's a problem. Um, a, a, that where, whether it be a federal agency or someone in the association, that if this occurs, that very quickly the right people could get this. Uh, that you wouldn't have to go through local law enforcement and find out they could tell you who else to call. Is there, is that, does that exist now here? It, it, you know, it, like, how's my driving? Call 1-800 on a truck. I mean, how do we do that mm -hmm. for the consumer? When something goes wrong, they know who to call. Yeah, that, that's an interesting concept. The 1-800, how's my driving? Yeah. The moving industry is, is not a bad idea, and we don't have that. Um, I, I mentioned earlier, Senator, the um, American Moving and Storage Association is promoting a program called the ProMover Program, and that's why I'm taking the opportunity now to put my folder in front of you and talk about how we certify our movers and try to make sure that they're doing the right thing. Um, part of that program is working with the Department of Transportation to um, make sure that the, the companies coming into the industry and the companies that we promote are solid and abide by the law. In terms of who you're able to call, um, one program that we mentioned earlier is Move Rescue. And that is um, a program that's primarily run through uh, Unigroup, and a, um, one of our member companies. And they employ um, their um, system of agents, uh, lawyers that are familiar with transportation law, um, they have a partnership with FMCSA, and they do have a 1-800 hotline number. But I would say that the movers that are displaying that number are likely to be within that Unigroup family of agents. That's not an industry-wide program. It's limited to Mayflower and United, which are Unigroup yeah. companies. I would just hope the industry had some kind of good housekeeping seal that was on every contract, that if something goes wrong, there was someone to call. And if that seal's not there, you shouldn't right. move with them. Just a quick comment from you, Mr. Romp. Can, can we improve the consumer's ability to get to the right people quickly to resolve these hostage situations? Thank you. Senator DeMint, uh, the, one of the benefits of working with a credible broker who respects their position as a broker is they can help the consumer know how to do those things. So having a phone number to call is great, but I personally, I have talked to consumers who've been in dramatic situations, and I've contacted the FMCSA for them. So my pitch to our customers and our, uh, and our carriers is always the same. If you're following the regulations, great. If you're not, we're going to report you. If there's, if there's bad conduct and bad actors, we don't want them yeah. in the industry. I just uh, one last comment. I think this is a system that has to work quickly because if you're in a house with no furniture and a new job and, and uh, you're, you're likely to pay the, the ransom in order to get your furniture. And so I would just encourage, whether it's on the federal side, the industry side, that we have to have instant response so that someone would feel the heat immediately, some mover, mm -hmm. if, if they're trying to take advantage of a consumer. And if uh, the industry can do that, then it's less likely we're trying to come in with more laws to tell you what to do. But thank, thank you for the extra time, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you.